The following feature presentation is part of the Skywalking Network. It's a Neverland Clubhouse, yeah, yeah, yeah. Think of all that we will share. Disney updates and fandom will take you everywhere. It's Courtney and Kelly, two sisters that will be together. Oh, 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 join our Neverland Clubhouse, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two is twice as nice as one. Memories of friends and family, everybody is welcome. It's Courtney and Kelly, two sisters guiding you through Disney. Together, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 16th episode of the Neverland Clubhouse. I'm Kelly Turkel, and now please welcome my sister, Courtney. How was your week, Courtney? Oh, it's been, well, it's been good, and it's also going to be hectic because this is the week where we're getting ready to leave for Walt Disney World. <laughs> it's just so, days away, days it, away, and yep. who knows when this is going out, so we may be in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I am a bit blonder now because I just got my highlights real re read in, but they look yeah, great. But that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm packing and getting ready to go. <laughs> nice. Now, please join me in welcoming Sarah Woloski from Skywalking Through Neverland. What's been happening since uh, we last saw you at Celebration? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, well, we've been just busy putting out videos and podcasts and all our roundtables that we recorded from Star Wars Celebration. So, yeah, we've been pretty much doing that um, all like the past two weeks. And now, because Richard has just written, you know, today in Star Wars history, part one, we put out Absolutely. on May Go 25th. Exactly. <laughs> you guys were there at the opening party. Well, yeah, got mine. Yeah. So he just yesterday started working on finalizing part two. Wow. So, yeah, it's so your wow. feet is not over yet. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, we are going to be very busy until Life Day, which is November 17th. That's when we're shooting for the part two to come out. Yeah. Right, right. Awesome. Can't wait to have my signed volume two copy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of work. And I feel like uh, all three of us have just not stopped since celebration. Oh, yeah. Uh, just working and putting out content and all kinds of things. Um, but we are the Disney podcast that goes to different park lands to share Disney stories, news, and what's going on with Disney Plus. We are your tour guides through Disney fandom. And on today's episode, we will actually be spending our time across the street at the convention center because <laughs> we are discussing everything about the conventions. Of course, Star Wars Celebration and the new upcoming one, D23 Expo, which is going to be here in September. <laughs> oh, it's, that's going to come so fast. And this is all at the Anaheim Convention Center. Oh, my gosh. Everything. I love it when the, we have conventions there. I know. I do, too. It's just, it's just the best. <laughs> conventions are a crazy whirlwind of no sleep, no food, and crazy adrenaline. Yep. <laughs> so since we will be diving into Star Wars Celebration first, let's jump in the Millennium Falcon and charge to into hyperspace. <laughs> Well, this May 26th through 29th, Star Wars Celebration took place at the Anaheim Convention Center. Now, Kelly and Courtney, this was your first Star Wars Celebration. Yes. But so I, I'm going to ask you some questions. But um, now we have already gone over this extensively on Skywalking Through Neverland. So because of that, we thought that we would share some of our favorite parts, especially since we've had time to kind of think about celebration it's settled in right like when we recorded we recorded like basically each day after celebration after yeah. the whole day and after yeah after like again no sleep no food yes <laughs> and like deliriously on adrenaline and <laughs> crazy craziness 
<laughs> exactly. So now we've had some sleep. We've had some yes. food, hopefully. Uh, and <laughs> we've had some time to think. So Courtney, what was your favorite part about your first celebration? I really enjoyed being there. I did. Um, the whole experience, even though we didn't stay for all four days, we stayed for three out of the four. Um, the whole experience was great. And I just fell in love with Star Wars even more. But my my uh, favorite part was actually getting to be in the streaming panel of Light and Magic, which is a six part documentary that will be released on Disney Plus. But it they didn't really give us a timeline of it uh, because I love behind the scenes stuff. So I've always been so interested in behind the scenes. And what this documentary goes into is the the production and how they came up with how Star Wars looks. So it is about industrial light and magic and all of the guys that were there from the beginning, like Phil Tippett, Dennis Murin, um, Joe Johnston, all of those guys. And also Ron Howard was in on the panel and they just told stories um, about what you're going to see in the documentary. Like one story they told was how George Lucas actually came to the place I think that it was in Van Nuys at the time and Joe Johnston was in this hot tub and then the rest of the guys were like with this refrigerator and they were like pulling it up and dropping it and so like everybody just thought they were goofing off and George Lucas came with some big wigs from Fox studios and Rose she, she was kind of like the um secretary and so it was when like Lucas showed up you had to be like on your best behavior but like these guys were in the middle of you know, just dropping these refrigerators on the ground and in the hot tub. And so they walked in and George Lucas saw all them doing this. And then they walked right back out. And she was like, she was like, oh, I, I think she thought they were in so much trouble. And then Joe was like, like, it was for research why they were dropping the refrigerator and stuff. And she's like, oh, and like, you could see this like light bulb go off. And she's like, oh, why didn't nobody tell the studio? Like she was like all these years later, she was just like, I never knew that. Oh, <laughs> so she had thought all this time that she was covering up for them. Yeah. I she mean, she played it kidding. up. Like she, she played it up. Okay. Like she never knew it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if she actually did or not, because I'm sure I'm I sure know. like you could, I, I mean, when she mentioned them dropping a refrigerator, I was like, they must be trying to figure out some kind of velocity or some kind of, yeah. some kind of something, but, um, <laughs> but they told all these stories like yeah. that. And it just kind of set up of how this like documentary is going to come across on the screen. And I just can't yeah. wait to see it. So like, that was one of my favorite panels. Like we made sure that we were up early and in line in the standby line. Cause we didn't get any lottery panels for it. So we, we made sure we were in the standby line to get into that panel. That's good. And were you, so this documentary, I guess it will go back to like kind of the ILM's beginnings yes, and then yeah. will it go all the way up through today a little bit, kind of like the um, Imagineering story? It might. Uh, it, they definitely had somebody who was from Lucasfilm on the panel uh, in present day. Yeah. Lin, Lin Wen Brennan. I yeah, believe. Lin and Brennan. But I'm not sure. They didn't say that it was like a whole up to. Um, and okay. I'm sure they're going to like touch on the part in the 90s when they were building the dinosaurs for Jurassic Park and how they thought that they were all going to lose their jobs and stuff like that because of CGI coming uh. into it and stuff like that. So it definitely is going to like go that trajectory of like how they grew and well I feel like they wouldn't have brought Linwin out if they weren't going to go up to present day yeah Mm. so and I definitely feel because they were asking her how that she keeps that um spirit alive where they can just kind of try anything or come up with anything like anything is possible and be creative and how she keeps that alive today and um so I I do think that they do talk to her of whether or not they go into more um, into the company today. I don't know, but I feel like they will bring it into present day. Okay. At least yeah. up to perhaps stagecraft, because at that point when the Disney plus shows came out, now we have, what is that called? Like they already do a special for each of the new shows, yeah, like, like assembled, like for yes. Marvel series and uh, gallery for star Wars. That's so. it. The Disney gallery. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Well, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. I wish we had a, a date on that, but I do knows? too. They didn't say fall. They didn't say date. They just said yeah. it's a six part documentary coming to Disney plus. Okay. And then I was like, after seeing this, I was like, okay, they need to do one for Marvel studios. They need to do one for Pixar. Like they need a six part. They need an imagineering story for all of the <laughs> outlets. <laughs> Sounds good. I want to know it all. I want to know it all. All right. Well, Kelly, did you have a favorite moment? Yeah. So out of all the time we spent on the floor and all the panels we went to, I, after all this time, I still go back to that opening panel with a Lucasfilm showcase and opening it up with Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen coming out to that chorus choir singing Duel of the Fates. And the crowd, even in our room, which was a streaming room, we weren't in the actual room that they were standing in, but even in our room, the electric feel, the excitement, the opening up of Star Wars celebration with that moment, it, I just, it brings me back to the feeling that I get at D23 with the exciting announcements and the new stuff coming and all of that. So I, I think that moment and Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen practically crying on stage while everybody's mm -hmm. cheering for them um, is just still what I think about to this day. That's awesome. I loved that. Yeah. It was such a great panel too. It went into all the new stuff that Lucasfilm was working on, including Indiana Jones 5 with Harrison Ford and uh, and Willow. Willow and... We got to sing happy birthday to John Williams and because he's 90. And I think that was just such a great way to kick off Star Wars Celebration. That's awesome. Wow. Well, you had such a different experience, Sarah, this year. So tell us what was your favorite part. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, I mean, uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had a, we like hosted a lot of panels. That was fun, but it's also kind of a challenge because you're wrangling people and things like that. Um, so I well, on on all of our celebration wrap-ups, you know, I mentioned that I got to go to the Ashley Eckstein and Matt Lanter breakfast. It's an exclusive breakfast on Sunday morning. So I'm very jealous. I know. <laughs> I know. It was I'm amazing. So I did record some video, so that's up on the YouTube channel. Um, so you can get an idea of it. But but so I, I wanted to say think of something different too, because mm -hmm. that was like by far one of my favorite fandom moments. However, I uh, Okay, I'm going to change my answer for my notes. I just really liked Sunday, honestly, okay. of celebration because uh, all of our panels were like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all the stuff that we had to do, all our obligations. So Sunday um, after this breakfast, we went to the first panel of the day, which was the Bad Batch um, season two in the main big celebration stage. And we basically stayed there all day or I did. Anyway, so after I saw that, we waited like an hour. There was some stuff going on on stage. You could just chill out. And then we watched all four final episodes of The Clone War Season 7. Um, it's basically the Siege of Mandalore arc. Oh, okay. Which was great. And then we saw a panel with Dave Filoni and some of the women who actually helped bring this Clone Wars season seven to life. And then we just stayed there because there was another panel after that. Uh, so it was just lovely to sit there and not like do <laughs> anything. <laughs> it was almost like the chill day that, that we usually get like after a big celebration, but it happened on day four. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's I, good to hear. Cause like we weren't there yeah. on day four. So we yeah. Didn't really know what went day on. four. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, would so love to have closed it up with everybody, uh, but we had to get back to real life. <laughs> I know. Yes. And well, okay. So you can listen, ladies, to our day four 
round table of Star Wars Celebration (laughs) on the Skywalking (laughs) Through Neverland podcast. Um, And you can find uh, day one and day two and three with us on it on Skywalking Through Neverland as well. And we talk a lot about all of the things that happened during the day and all of our experiences, including the Mandalorian experience, which was amazing. And being able to see Obi-Wan, the first two episodes with all the fans as well, those pretty epic moments are some some special shout outs. Yes. And (laughs) even just those daily roundtables were really nice to be able to. They were really fun and uh, meeting everybody, you know, even at your uh, panels that we got to attend, uh, we met a bunch of Skywalkers and a bunch of people that listen to our podcast. And it was so much fun. So great. I, it was their first real like oh I listened to your podcast and it was it felt so good yeah. <laughs> so shout out to you guys who said hi yeah, <laughs> yeah. of course the skywalking network variety show was a showstopper yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> absolutely yeah. it was definitely a variety of yeah. things musical acts and podcasts and announcements last minute change-ups <laughs> <laughs> exactly that was fun. And that will, that we, we did record that. So that audio will be coming out in June on the Skywalking Through Neverland uh, podcast. We just, awesome. you know, it's lots more content coming yes. your way. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And we do want to say thank you to, to Richard and yourself to, you know, share that spotlight with all of us. That was very generous of you. And that, you know, it was, it was fun to actually be a part of you know, uh, Star Wars celebration, not just attend it, um, being the first one. So that was very awesome. Yeah. 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 I'm so glad you got to do that. And I wish D 23 expo had like a podcast stage or something like fan panels. They really there would don't. be so many podcasts <laughs> that want to get in on that. There I know, it's really true. Many. Uh, but I have to say the hardest time that I laughed the whole weekend was at your Ewok panel when Richard and Kevin Thompson and Eric Walker <laughs> reenacted a scene from <laughs> the Ewok adventure movies and Richard was a tree and yes. got a hatchet thrown at him <laughs> and the hatchet was flying across and right over Bryn and I I haven't laughed as hard in a long time. <laughs> Poor Bryn. Bryn. <laughs> Love you, Bryn. <laughs> that was that was pretty awesome (laughs) i have a video of it on my phone and i just watch it sometimes (laughs) i just need a laugh (laughs) hey you gotta do what you gotta do to get through the day right (laughs) yeah absolutely again if you haven't seen it it's on skywalking through neverland so it's a must yay But, you know, conventions are a good time and uh, we all love going to conventions. And we have another one coming up in September. And Courtney, tell us all about that one. Yes, so the next uh, convention is the D23 Expo where it's all Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, and Pixar, as well as Disney Channel, ABC, and Disney Plus for three days straight. (laughs) They just announced all the big panels So let's go over them and get hyped up. Oh my gosh. Okay. So fair warning here. I have not really looked at all this news. So you guys tell me and our listeners what's happening and we'll all react. (laughs) Okay. Sounds good. (laughs) I didn't think you did because you've been busy. so. (laughs) So D23 is September 9th through the 11th yeah so september 9th is gonna kick off with the legends award ceremony but it also kicks off disney 100 um so it is going to be in since it is uh 2023 (laughs) no well oh well the thing is this 2023 is going to be 100 years of disney so this panel will kick off 100 years of disney okay but it's early by three months exactly (laughs) okay well it's just kind of the theme for the expo oh Um, gotcha it's like everything's branded with disney 100 i have a lanyard that says disney 100 all the t-shirts it's just kind of the theme for the event 
Got it. Got it. So they are combining Disney 100 with the Legends Award ceremony, which they'll pick about like 10 uh, recipients and then they'll each get like a thing. Uh, like, I, I don't know how long they get. They get like maybe 20 minutes or so of each one. Oh, not even. I would say 10 or less. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is like previous Disney Legends ceremonies. We've seen George Lucas. Mm-hmm. We've seen um, uh, Stan Lee. Oh yeah. Yeah. Stan Lee. Uh, Mark Hamill. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I'm like composer Danny Elfman mm-hmm. saw him. Uh, yeah. I'm just thinking of the people who like Christina come to mind. Aguilera is a Disney. Yeah. Legend. And then of course, anybody who voices a Di- Disney princess. Uh, yes. Yeah. They Carol. inducted all of the Disney princesses one year. <gasps> their voices. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. It's so, so much fun. What that means is that somebody has um, made a significant contribution, um, whether it be a visionary or an artist or, you know, singers, voice actors, they are awarded this, this honor and what they they get a statue and they normally get their hands printed or put in bronze. And then it goes up on the legends um, plaza. Plaza, yeah. Plaza, yeah. At, at the, the Walt studio. Disney Studios. Right, right. Yeah. Which I've seen Julie Andrews there. There's like Bob mm-hmm. Hope. There's like oh, random, yeah, like. <laughs> Pedro Hera. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pedro Hera. Um, Jody Benson. Marty uh, Sklar. Marty Sklar. You know, yeah. uh, Dave Smith. We've gone, we have a whole episode about him. Yeah. There's, there's a ton of them. And I love that they do this every year and they always pick 10 and it's from every uh, department in the company. It, it can be composers, writers, animators, imagineers. Yes. Um, yeah, it can be anything. So that's going to be like at 10.30 a.m. it says. So it's first thing in the morning, that's what they're going to do. And then at 3.30, guests will be treated to new details, first looks, sneak peeks, surprises, and announcements regarding upcoming Theatrical and Disney Plus titles from Disney Live Action, Pixar Animation Studios, and Walt Disney Animation Studios. Basically, this is the movie panel. However, well, okay, so they're they're switching it up because formerly we've had the live action panel and that has basically been every studio uh, like Marvel, Star Wars, Lucasfilm, um, Disney, yeah and that's been their live action and then they had like a disney plus panel in 2019 it was like just disney plus and but it was all the studios who were contributing to disney plus including marvel star wars whatever so now what it seems like they're doing is they're separating the studios into their own panels so this 3 30 p.m panel is not just live action because it includes pixar and right. Walt Disney Animation. So actually, it's a little odd. So what yeah. I kind of got out of the panel separation was they are separating movies, like all movies, animation, live action movies of oh. Walt Disney, of Disney, of Disney. And I then see. there is a Marvel and Lucasfilm panel separate to that. So they're getting their own panel, but okay. together. Right. And then they are doing TV which also includes like Disney Channel branded or um, Disney, Disney Plus, Plus or anything that represents oh. a TV aspect. Of, but that's not Marvel or Lucasfilm. But that's right. not Marvel or Lucasfilm. Interesting. And Disney Plus is going to be scattered in all of those categories. Right. So we do not have a, a Disney, Disney Plus. Plus Panel. And that is panel. why we get Disney Plus Day on September 8th. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow, which is like the, the day before yes. D23 Expo. Which exactly. is very interesting because Disney Plus Day is November 12th. Yeah. <laughs> or at least right. that's what it's been. Because that's <laughs> well, it November 12th is when the, the, you know, what we all know, <laughs> Disney Plus launched November 12th. And then Last in 2019, year, right? 2019? Yeah, 2019. Yeah. And then last year when the parks reopened on November 12th, they were like, it's Disney Plus Day. And they did a whole big thing in the parks. They had a blue carpet out 
and they Aww, gave you like buttons amazing. and I think they gave you hats if you like if you got there early. So I okay. have a feeling they're going to do the same thing. So if you have a magic key um, that's not that you expired. activated <laughs> after September 1st. <laughs> <laughs> that's not expired yet then you can make a reservation for september 8th because they'll probably be doing something in the park. that is a whole different <laughs> set of news that we are skipping right over <laughs> yes 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 there might be a whole other podcast when we come back from Walt disney world about that news yeah <laughs> but i do have to say that september 8th i just think it's really funny that disney was like you know November 12th is inconvenient for us this year. We're just going to change the date. I know. I was like, September 8th, why? Yeah. Oh, it's the day before. Okay. Yes. I see. However, that is also my dad's birthday. Oh, oh happy well. birthday, dad. Happy birthday to Peter. Yes. Happy birthday to Peter. All right, so let's recap this Friday. Now that we have our panels situated, thank you, Kelly. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I was confused. Um, yes. So Friday, it kicks off with the Disney Legends ceremony, yes. which that's that's like it's always been. But then at 3.30 on Friday, we are getting the Movie. Disney live action, the Pixar, Pixar Animation Studios, and the Walt Disney Animation Studios theatrical film. Yes. Or no. Movie. Movies. Movies. Either theatrical or Disney Plus. Right. Yes. Okay. It's I'm movies. I hope they call it the movie panel. Like, yeah. I don't know what they're going to call it because this right here, it doesn't say anything specific. Like, it, it doesn't have roll a name. off the tongue. No. <laughs> no, I don't know. But I'm, but it's the movie panel. Okay. Like, I read all of that and I was like, okay, these are the long form theatrical movies. And, and not always released in theaters. It can be Disney Plus. Remember, Disney Plus is scattered throughout all the panels. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then Saturday, September 10th, let's yeah. jump to this. So actually, okay. So Kelly, why don't you explain? Yeah. Okay. So as I was saying, uh, Marvel and Lucasfilm are getting their own panel. So they are going to be the star of the morning and um, they're getting the morning panel at 10 a.m. in Hall D23. So they are going to be that first major panel that morning on Saturday. Cool. And then at 3.30 p.m. Yeah, this is going to be your TV. So Got your it. Disney Channel, their, your um, Doc McStuffins, your High School Musical, Musical, the series, <laughs> Owl House, Descendants. We're going to get more Descendants what? news. What? Yes. Yes. We're going to Wonderland, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get Alice. Oh. Um, yeah. Oh, and they're going to go into more about like National Treasure, the Santa Claus, which just wrapped up filming with Tim Allen. That's going to be oh. a, a TV series. So, okay. Um, yeah. So, so yes. Yeah, so this is Disney Channel, Disney Junior, Disney Plus, yes. all the TV yes. kind of stuff for Disney. For Disney. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. So then Sunday, September 11th the big one <laughs> this is gonna be my favorite and we're definitely doing anything we can to get into this panel yeah. it is the park experiences and products panel so and we're gonna this see is where they announce all the new stuff coming to all the parks everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. it's not just disneyland and walt disney world but everywhere and so on the high time, seas yeah last time we got the wish news which Oh, and they did the say way. they did say we had three more ships coming so we might get more Whoa. cruise line news and they're going to be the triton class so they're going to be like in the class of the wish so, wow yeah that is exciting and we'll probably get announcements of things that we'll never see exactly <laughs> like, like the mary, mary poppins. poppins mary poppins <laughs> i've got here i'm so sad about that yes. i know and the update to spaceship earth and all of the different neighborhoods in Epcot that was all announced they're still working on some of it but yes the Mary Poppins one has been put on hold I hope it comes back maybe we'll get an announcement that it's coming back yeah. <laughs> I hope so um, I hope so too and a lot of people are speculating that we're gonna splash mountain with the princess and the frog date that's and right. I think we're going to get a lot of Disney forward, which is the expansion of Disneyland and Disney's California adventure. 
Oh. And downtown Disney. Yeah. That's right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that will be very exciting to hear yes. about. All the, the big yeah. dreams of the Disney Imagineers. But also, is this says. is where last time we heard the big, like, production number of magic happens and then we got it for two weeks yes. and then shut down <laughs> yeah i hope that true. they announced that that's coming back because they really put all this money into a parade that ran for two weeks Aww. but ladies we were very fortuitous and we went to the disney princess the concert and guess what they're bringing it to d23 expo <laughs> <laughs> that's so fun Aww. we had so much fun at this concert and i'm sure that this concert is going to be amazing again and yeah. it's going to be a part of the disney bubble expo so everybody's going to enjoy it it's going to be on sunday afternoon pretty much when everything is kind of wrapping up at 4 15 and of course, Susan Egan and um, Sydney Winters is going to be in it again. Sydney and Winters and uh, Annalise Vanderpool, of course, which who we raved about from Raven's Home. And, and also I believe, Isabel McCullough. Yeah, she's right. new. So okay. I, I, yeah. yeah, I think they're going to uh, integrate her into the show. And then Adam J. Levy, who played the guy parts uh, right. at okay. our show. It will be in this one as well. Right. And the music director, Benjamin Rohala yes, as well. He was he the too. one who was at our concert? He was the playing one playing the piano. The piano. He is a lot of concert. The, the guy that does like the Aladdin part usually mm -hmm. uh, rotates out. That's okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. And let's see this. This concert says the acclaimed cast will perform favorite Disney princess and frozen songs, including classics such as part of your world. Let it go. A Whole New World, Colors of the Wind, and Almost There. The performers will share exclusive, hilarious, and heartfelt behind-the-scenes stories from their time on the stage and screen. That was the best part. It yes, really it was. was. <laughs> yes, I love that part. But like, to... like, we're, we're like behind the scenes junkies. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. if you give us like, uh, I could talk to you for hours if you're just going to tell me like how something was, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> well, it's not only that, but the way they told the stories, like they were yeah. just so into it. Like Susan Egan, I still remember. Yeah. Her oh, little she's stories. a good storyteller. She is yeah. such a good little storyteller. And uh, I can see why she is a storyteller with her music and her performances and acting because she loves to tell a good story yes definitely oh okay so out of all these panels what do you guys think is the one you're looking forward to most oh well definitely <laughs> Disney parks <laughs> okay um but also I'm I might try and do the well, I love Lucasfilm and Marvel panels. Like I, we, we've never done that one before. Like when it oh. was a live action movie, we chose not to do that one. Wow. That to was see, the one we'd always want to do. <laughs> like yeah, our biggest but, one. Yeah. Because that one's always gets leaked out, you know, afterwards. And there, there was always a smaller panel that we wanted to go to. That's the thing too, is they haven't really announced any of the smaller panels. Right. Which are going to be like celebrating a big milestone of a certain movie. Like one year they had Hercules, the 20th anniversary. Or we went to the Goofy movie, 20th anniversary. So there's also going to be like smaller panels that are going to have celebrities that were in those movies. Or celebrating something that you'll have to pick and choose. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to go to Lucasfilm and Marvel and see what that one's about. Or even the disney theatrical <laughs> i want to go to all of them okay i was gonna okay. say you gotta pick one <laughs> <Come Courtney. laughs> but, but probably most likely the parks the parks <laughs> okay one. okay you know what we really had a good time at the parks panel um, okay the last time uh but so that, well, i think even though the parks panel is going to be super fun um i have a feeling that there are going to be less announcements because of all of the budget cuts and everything. So I am looking forward to the movie panel. I want to go to the movie panel this uh, time because it's an all encompassing movie panel. And like we said, this is going to be a very interesting separation between the panels because they've never done it like this before. 
And if they have Pixar animation, Walt Disney animation, um, uh, live, Walt Disney live action, it, I think it's going to be a huge panel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That one I would definitely try and get into. <laughs> yeah, I'm. for me, it's, it's, uh, it's between the Marvel Studios and Lucasfilm one. Although I feel like we did get a ton of Lucasfilm news, you know, yeah. at this previous, you know, Star Wars so celebration. I feel like it might be more Marvel heavy than Lucasfilm just because I hope they so. have Star Wars celebration. Right. That makes sense. Know. Yeah. Um, and, but I, so I think I'm honestly looking forward to the movie panel as well. The Friday one, that's the Disney live action, Disney animation and Pixar animation, mostly because like, we get such interesting nuggets from these panels. Like I can still remember 2009 D23 Expo. Mm -hmm. We got the first look at the Tangled Tower and some of the production art. And I was like, what is this film? Like you, you start falling in love with these movies before just in concept phase mm -hmm. yeah. at that point. I mean, at that point, Tangled was like a year away. However, um, you know, some of these movies, you get like these interesting concepts that then turn into something else four years later, like onward was initially proposed as I believe like a Jack and the Beanstalk story starring yeah. Ewan McGregor. I think when that totally changed. And then they mentioned there was like some kind of unicorns that were going to be going around in the trash. And it was like this weird. I, version remember, world. I remember this and right? because I, I don't remember being in the room because I don't remember what year it was announced, but I remember them saying something about this magical town with these yeah. unicorns in the trash can. And I don't think it was called Onward at the no, time. No, it was not. No. It was not. And and it turned into something so interesting with all the dad stuff and the magical things and the right. journey that he went on. Right. Yeah, this whole concept turned into Onward after a couple times of going through the D23 Expo. So I just really like seeing those kind of journeys again the behind the scenes thing right the, yeah. and the journey um I went to the Aladdin um oh. an Aladdin anniversary panel and Courtney went to a once upon well Courtney went to a once upon a time panel I went to Aladdin panel and um which I had to pick and choose <laughs> I mean I have a <laughs> saying at these conventions and I hope people take this is you do what you do and you don't get upset yes because you can't do everything and you have to choose. So I decided that I was going to go to the Aladdin panel because I love Aladdin. It was a behind the scenes with Ron Clemens and his writing partner. And I forget his name right now. John. Um, Ron and John. But, <laughs> yeah, Ron and John. Um, and, and it was them talking about them making Aladdin. And not only was it them talking about them making Aladdin, but they went into a lot of Robin Williams things. They showed... Mm um his outtakes yeah the animated deleted scenes they animated they animated his deleted scenes wow. and at the end of that panel they showed us the very beginning of Moana because yeah. they were also wrote working Moana. on that yeah, yeah. They, were, they were working on Moana and it was baby Moana I still remember it. it was baby Moana standing in front of the ocean controlling the waves what is this? This is so cute. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. And I have so much Moana stuff in front of me right now. I have uh, <laughs> a Jim Shore Moana. I have a Pua on the bed. I have a poster in my room. So yeah, you just, you begin to fall in love with these movies that they show you just little tidbits of. Well, that and, happened as well yeah. with um, in 2017 with the Power of the Princess panel. So it was a smaller panel and it was after they had already debuted the movie, uh, the movie panel, mm. the animated movie the animation. Yeah, the so animation. they were talking to all the princesses. There was like four princesses, I think. It was definitely Ali Kovalo and um, Anika Nani Rose and I think uh, Jody Benson. Jody Benson and there was and one other. I Paige think O'Hara. Paige, Paige O'Hara. So yeah. they, they they were talking about just their career and how the power of the princess was, you know, helped them and what that means. But at the end, they showed us the princess scene from Wreck It Ralph too. Oh, nice. Not yes. colored, not colored, but not it was colored. just sketched. Wow. Yeah. So, and we had to put our phones away. Like we couldn't take them out or anything. Yeah. So like these, at these smaller panels, they'll show you things that they're working on 
or something that's related to something that they were going to show in the big panel that you may not have gotten in. So don't be discouraged if you don't get into the big panels because they might have a little extra something saved for one of the smaller panels. I think my favorite, uh, one of my favorite panels is still the a Goofy movie anniversary panel that we went to. We got a full blown power line concert right in front of us. And the room was not full and we were towards the front. Wow. And the guy that sang the song originally, Kevin Campbell, came out and gave us a concert in full power line gear. Like, wow. it was so cool. So while there are very, very cool, big things that everybody wants to do, find those special gems too, because uh, the, what you do and what you get to do is so special just being there that everything is special so do what you want and don't get upset about what you've got to do <laughs> I think that's a good lesson I hope everyone heeds that who's going yeah. now we did get one more announcement though about d23 not just the panels but they always go to the Disney archives. They always call something really cool and put it together and some amazing archives experience. So what are they doing this year? So they're doing um, an all new exhibit called Step in Time. <gasps> and so this is going to go over the hundred years of the company. So the Walt Disney archives are putting together this exhibit to kick off the Disney 100. And it's gonna be a chronological exhibit Ooh. that showcases all the historical assets like never before with immersive themed environments from animated shorts, films, and film premieres, as well as television products and park favorites. Wow. Um, so they're going to have like Snow White, Mary Poppins, Tron, um, stuff from the Haunted Mansion, like from the parks. Ooh. And they're saying that they'll go over like the iconic moments of the Disney history. So wow. that's just in the exhibit. And I, I was saying to Kelly, like, I hope they use that spot that they use for the Mandalorian exhibit. Because yes, that it sounds like room. it actually, yeah. it says 12,000 square foot experience is what they're saying. Yeah. So, and, and yeah, you're I right. think that it has to be. Like that. <laughs> that. Yeah. And it says that you'll literally step in time into the various immersive areas now they're going to oh. like divide it into like nine different areas. Oh. Yeah. And it, wow. they'll even have like, they said they'll have um, photo ops in oh, there. Boy. Now they've never had photo, photo ops. You can take pictures in there and you can like on your own, but they've never had photo ops. In oh my the God. Experience. I'm reading this. You can captain the boat in Steamboat Willie. You mm -hmm. can walk the blue carpet at the premiere of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I'm like getting chills. You I know. You could be. In, oh, you could be <gasps> serenaded by Breathless Mahoney at Club no, no, Ritz. No. You can ah. visit the carousel horses from Mary Poppins. Does that mean you can ride them? I mean, probably not. <laughs> probably not. It doesn't say that. But oh my Those god. Are old. <laughs> no touching, just seeing. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. And you'll come face to face with with the bride of, in the haunted mansion. I Ooh. mean, come Scary. on. <laughs> and then they've already recreated Flynn's arcade over at yes. Disney's California Adventure. So I'm pretty sure they're gonna bring that over from Tron. Um, so yeah, and they're gonna have like a timeline down the middle of the the thing, separating everything, you know, so that you can chronologically oh. go from 1923 to 2000. 2023 yeah yeah <laughs> this is the kickoff <laughs> of the 100th yeah cool. yeah wow but also they did give hints to what will be on the archive stage oh. um so it they're just little hints of who will be hosting and being on panels <laughs> um on this one um they say notable um disney legend bill farmer who is the voice of goofy I love him. I know. Yeah. Um, Walt Disney Archives director Becky Klein, author and historia, historian Graham Allen. They wrote a book about holidays in Disneyland. Ooh. Um, actually in Disney parks, holidays in Disney parks. Also Bob Weiss, 
Bob Weiss is the Walt Disney Imagineering Global Ambassador and historian and artist Sasha Martin will offer a unique peek behind the magic. So all of them are going to be doing different panels. They won't all be on the same, but each one of them will have a panel on the archive stage. There also is going to be a 50 year legacy of the Main Street Electrical Parade. Um, nice. there, that's going to be a panel. And then also a look at the 1980s and the 1990s Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> Oh my gosh. The 1990s? They never do the 1990s. They I know. always go all the way back, which is wonderful. Love. But I want the 90s. <laughs> they need to have Christina come back. They need to have JC Chavez, Chavez like all of them. Justin, all Justin of them. Timberlake. They all, they all need to be. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Please. Carrie Russell, you can't have Ryan Gosling. Oh, wow. Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Be there. Ryan Gosling better be there, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I like never saw the Mickey Mouse Club, so but I'm I'm just giggling at how excited you guys are. It's oh hilarious. my goodness. It we was like the one babies. thing we never we are missed. 90s babies. Wasn't it Britney Spears in that too? Yes, but yeah. I don't think she's gonna be there. That's why I'm saying <laughs> I think that would be amazing. I mean, I think it would be amazing if she was, but that's how they all knew each other because Britney yeah. Spears, Christina Aguilera, Justin Timberlake, JC Chazé. Wow. I mean, we just went to a Backstreet Boys concert, so like yeah. 90s. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's and you're wearing your shirt. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, I'm getting excited already. I'm so glad we like went through this and got ourselves hyped up and there's even more to be announced and coming. Well, like you guys hinted at one more thing because oh, they thing. are bringing Walt's airplane. Whoa. So earlier in the year, it was announced that Walt Disney's Grumman Gulfstream one airplane will be on display at the D23 Expo. And to accompany the return of the, I don't know how this piece of that. Disney history, which is having its exterior restored. So that's the like the plane that Amazon is restoring. Oh, um, wow. Uh, there will be an will exhibit. Be, yeah, it, they, they announced that Amazon was restoring it. Okay. Um, so the exterior is being restored and will be available for guests to see in the arena of the Anaheim Convention Center. So is this where like the celebration stage was the I, round? I mean, that's yes. usually what they call the arena. But so you know what? Be yes. Oh, yeah. So this big old plane is going to be in the arena. How are they going to even get it in there? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I mean, wow. I know Ronald Reagan's plane is in his library. So I know right. that they can. I mean, I they probably how. built the library around it, though. No, because it. No, I remember it coming down the like oh. the freeway. And, oh, like, yeah. I, okay. I, I, I re- yeah, it was a big thing in um, <laughs> so like, Dini Valley. Um, yeah, but, I bet. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I want to know how, and I, I want to go in that plane, but I really, really hope that it has some type of virtual queue system. I don't know because that line's gonna be long. Yeah. <laughs> so, Although yeah. the little green man that walked across our screen every day <laughs> at the Star Wars celebration, I wanted to uh, kill him. I, I wanted <laughs> to throw that phone across mm-hmm. the, the across the screen. Yeah. But yeah. I, otherwise, people are just going to be waiting all day for this plane to go yeah. inside because it's not going to be very big, right? Inside, so we'll see. Well, yeah, because it says the exterior was restored so and available for guests to see so i don't think you're gonna go inside because um, also there is a going to be an exhibit right next to it to go with it that it's featuring the specially selected items that represent the history of the aircraft ah, and there included you go. will be a customized instrument panel originally located near mm. walt's favorite onboard so seat. maybe it'll be like a museum type thing next to it yeah, yeah. okay So, and that enabled him to monitor flight conditions, a telephone handset, which gave Walt a direct line of communication to the pilot in the cockpit and a flight bag adorned with an image of Mickey Mouse sitting on the tail of the famed plane. So I don't think we'll be able to go in it. You'll be able to see it. um, And then they'll have a little exhibit of what could have been in the plane. Got Maybe it. that's for the best because <laughs> yeah. that'll be a long line to go in the plane. But I'm sure there'll be a line to get your photo in front of the plane. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that'll I think be so. It. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 
Woo. All right. Uh, There's so much, <laughs> but we're not done yet. Right. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Disney was not done with the announcements this week. It came in with a bang with some Halloween announcements on the West coast. Courtney, give us those Halloween announcements. Yeah. So we got info on Oogie Boogie Bash and Halloween time in the parks. So for the first time ever, <laughs> Halloween time will start on September 2nd. Because <laughs> why? Because why? Because D23 Expo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Because people will be there and they want to show off Halloween. So, yep. um, so September 2nd through October 31st is your Halloween season this year. And the first Oogie Boogie Bash is earlier than ever before. It is on September 6th. Wow. And for the first time, Magic Key Holders will get a pre-sale window. So tickets will go on sale for Magic Key Holders, any tier, any tier, on uh, June 28th. No earlier than 9 a.m. Pacific time. <laughs> so we have Just to so remember that because we will be in Florida. <laughs> That'll be noon for you guys. Yes. Okay. And also for the first time, there will be a D23 members night only. So mm -hmm. this is actually going to be on September 10th <laughs> during the expo. Oh my God. Yeah. And then um, general... I think they wanted to capitalize on that Star Wars celebration, Star Wars night thing yes. that happened. It was really fun, but I was so exhausted. exhausted. The next day. I couldn't get to that morning panel, which was the Mando Plus panel, yeah. and uh, really, really kicked myself for that. So I don't <laughs> yeah. think we'll be doing this. this right. <laughs> yeah, as much as I wanted, I always love to do D23 things because mm -hmm. they just go that extra mile um, to make it a little bit more just members only kind well, of thing. it is on the more expensive side too. So I hope it there's was. more yeah, for them. I think them. it is the most yeah. expensive one. So yeah. I believe if I remember correctly, the price was 179, whereas Oof. like a regular night is 129 or 134 or something yeah. like that. But it does so. get more expensive as you get closer to Halloween. Yeah. So it could get up to that 179, but okay. I think it does. Or yeah, we're still to it. Yeah, we're still deciding on our date. Yeah, we'll so yeah. probably have a Skywalking Network night. Should yes. be fun. Yes, yeah, we should. Really With fun. a meetup. So, yeah, I love Oogie Boogie Bash. After doing these Disneyland After Dark events that are only four hours, like the fact that you get five hours, it's like a, such a big change. It really um, is. You know, of the party part. Yeah. Yes. And I really, really hope that they listen to this podcast so that they can add that cabaret villains cabaret thing that they had at villains night <gasps> that's right to yes. oogie boogie bash because i don't think they had anything on that stage at oogie boogie bash the last time no so mm -hmm. i think they could easily add that cabaret and switch it up more villains less uh new villains yeah let's, let's make some more songs let's do it because yeah that was amazing it really <laughs> that was, was and, really good and bring back agatha oh yes. yes yes and i think they should because uh uh house of harkness is announced <gasps> that's right yeah it's and bring back the zombies bring back the <laughs> zombies nah don't bring back the zombies Those yeah zombie cool. cap let's do zombie cap come on no. let's do it but agatha and scarlet witch out at the same time yes oh. that would be awesome that would be awesome yeah uh, yeah um but if you're not a d23 like gold or like or a magic key holder d23 member or magic key holder the general tickets do go on sale um june 30th no later than night oh so two days so. later so not, not yes bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we've seen years like these, uh, did they sell out fast last year? I no, they no. did not. Cause they so... do a lot of dates. So, okay. We'll but see what happens. It did take eight hours to get the ticket. To oh, the that's virtual right. Queue. Yeah. If anyone listening, when would you want to go to the Oogie Boogie Bash? Uh, did you go to Star Wars Celebration? Did you have a favorite moment? Uh, D23 Expo, what are you looking forward to? We want to hear all the things. And let us know if you're going because we'll, we should all have a skywalking meetup too. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. We'll definitely plan a skywalking meetup at the D23 Expo. Yes. Um, definitely. So we'll we'll do that. That'll be fun. We'll have to figure out what, what time that will be. 
Uh, maybe we'll go have electric pancakes at IHOP again. Yes, let's do it. Ah! <laughs> yes. That should be very fun. We'll do our round tables too. Yeah, exactly. It'll be really fun. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, we have oh, reached- Star Wars Celebration 2023 is going to oh. be in London. Yes. Yeah, so if you are yeah. planning on going and can get to London, it is in April, April 7th through the 10th, right? Yep. Easter weekend. Easter weekend of 2023. So treat yourself and go to London <laughs> and hopefully you guys have a good time at Star Wars Celebration. We unfortunately have decided we are not going to make it to that one. But the next one they announce, hopefully we will make it to. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, everyone, we want to give a big shout out and thank you to Rob Dellinger for composing our super cute theme song. So to hear more of Rob's work and see where he will be playing next, please go to his website, alpharhythmkings.com. We are part of the Skywalking Network, Skywalking. <laughs> where you can also find other great shows like Skywalking Through Neverland, Talking Apes, the Max FX podcast. Totally Tell Me Everything, Star Wars Ologies, and the YouTube shows Today in Star Wars History and Collect Obelix. You can check out all of the Skywalking Network podcasts, articles, and YouTube videos at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. You can also purchase Today in Star Wars History both on Amazon or uh, if you want an autographed copy from both Richard and I, you can do that at skywalkingthroughneverland.com slash book. Yes, you can also find us all over social media at Neverland Clubhouse Pod on Instagram, CLT8622 and Kelly Turkel and at Jedi Tink. You can find us on Facebook at Kelly Turkel and Courtney Turkel. Yes, and uh, you make sure over the next two weeks uh, to keep an eye on that Instagram because we're going to be active a lot because we'll be in Walt Disney World. Yes, I can't wait to see you guys. Yeah. Are you going to share stories too or whatever you kind of guys get to? We will definitely be taking pictures of what we can, um, doing stories, follow us. Um, it should be a good time. We're there for about 11 days. Wow. <laughs> so... <laughs> Lots of fun content, and we will be trying to ride Guardians of the Galaxy. We're going to be trying to ride Remy. Mickey and Minnie's Remy, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. There's a ton of new stuff that we haven't done since we've been there in 2020. So, cool. yeah, it's going to be a good time. And you can also find us in the Skywalking Through Neverland Facebook group. Just search Facebook for Skywalking Through Neverland group. Request to join and then answer the questions that pop up. Do it or we can't let you in. All right, then, second start of the right and straight on till morning. Join us for the next adventure from the Neverland Clubhouse.